So, where did the idea from the show come from? Uh, I had read uh, an article about an alien abduction support group, and I really liked the idea that something like that existed. Uh, and I thought that'd be a good that'd be a good world for a show. I want to know more about those people and why they do what they do. And, uh, I like the idea that they were all normal people and they all kind of supported each other. But then they all believe that something truly fantastic would happen to them. To me, that seems like a good metaphor for a lot of things. Was there a conscious effort to keep it really grounded emotionally too, and as funny as it is? Yeah. I think if you have aliens telling each other to eat a dick, you need something to ground it. And uh, I like I like comedy that's a little bit like um, I guess real people talking to each other. And you believe when you see their house, you believe it's really their house. Mm -hmm. It's not like a house you couldn't afford that they're living in, but they make less than you somehow. And you're like, I don't get it. How did how did the priest get an amazing? industrial loft. Right. Um, so yeah, I think for something, it, it's fun for me to balance fantasy with very grounded, believable reality. That to me feels like a fun show to watch. Well, for season two, was it? did you have a plan? Was it, we have a five season plan, we know what's one, we know what's two? Um, was, yeah, I, there's, there's some planning involved, and there's, uh, there's for season two, it's uh, kind of finding it on our feet to a certain degree mm -hmm. too. It's, it's both mixed, and then if you find a better idea you throw out of something that you plan that you love. It's, uh, it's kind of like Mount Boy or something. <laughs> you went to the season. Did you break all the episodes at once or was it kind of as, a, as you go? One by one. Okay. Yeah, one by one. It really is endurance. It's like you're running a marathon or something. It takes breaking the episodes and is, is the hardest part. Um, and then sending them out, writing them is, is, it's not easy, but getting the story to break and the track all the way across the episode is definitely a challenge. We talked a little bit about kind of how um, th the binge worthiness of the show. Yeah. So. It's, it works in a week by week thing, but is there a designer that kind of works like a ten half hour movie type thing, or is that is that a goal? I like that. That's yeah. an aspiration. I don't know that we've gotten there yet, but I think in terms of how a show should and could work, I think we're seeing shows like Transparent. Mm -hmm. uh, the second season of that feels like a, a ten act little movie or something. So to get something where there's enough serialization, where you say, oh yeah, I have to watch two more of mm -hmm. those, um, and have the serialization really pay off, that's always the goal. Is there a theme for season two or something people should, you know, what about season two can you tease, theme-wise, story-wise, what would we That's see? interesting, is there a theme for season two? Um, I think a theme for season two is maybe acceptance on some mm -hmm. level. Um, all these characters have had something fantastic happen to them and uh, talk to each other about it. People don't believe them, but this season it feels like they're starting to kind of say, oh no, we all know this happens. We don't feel as sheepish about it. Mm. And there's an ownership of it for them that I think is really fun to watch. And interesting. Is there freedom with TBS? I feel like we were talking too, there's shows on the live shows, or, you know, comedies on TBS. They're all so kind of daring and different than what we've seen, but all in that similar world. Is, is that a manifest from TBS or just a network that kind of works for this kind of show? I think they're just trying a bunch of different stuff. I mean, I think it's as, that's as complicated as it gets. I'm yeah. sure their strategy is much more complicated than that. <laughs> I'm sure if they had a PowerPoint deck, it wouldn't just be one slide. <laughs> just try whatever. Just doing stuff. But, uh, yeah, I think they're they're trying to program stuff the sense I get uh, that they like and mm -hmm. that they watch. And it's less of, like, uh, how do these shows work together across our entire brand? Um, and more just like, oh, that looks like it could be good. This looks like it could be fun. That's the impression I get. But I don't know. You have to ask Kevin Riley. <laughs> I'll go find like, him. That's nuts. <laughs> that's not what is absolutely wrong. That's what he sounds like. He smokes a cigar. <laughs> Do you think that new viewers can find season two and, and know what's going on right away? Or? Yeah, I think yeah. so. I think it's interesting. I mean, we have 21 minutes mm -hmm. yeah. to tell a serialized story, which is a, a challenge. Um, and I think the big thing with this show is uh, making a world that people can see and 
used to and they feel like they're home, but at the same time there are twists and um, I think it's designing something where people don't feel shut out if they start halfway through the season. Um, I do feel like I'm a little bit uh, myth mythology overloaded when I watch all my favorite shows because there's so many and they're so good and there's so much mythology that sometimes it's nice to lighten up on that time. Well, thank you. Yeah. Can't thank wait you. to see more. Thanks. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Thanks for the interview. Absolutely.